Okay, let's do an eyebrow or two. We, we have our photo here and there are dark eyebrows, but we don't want to make them too solid. So we're going to do a little bit of an approach like we did the thinner hairs and the baby hairs around the forehead. So let's do some of, some of that approach here. So I'm going to use my same smaller brush. It's not insanely small, but gives me a little, little bit of versatility here. I'm using my, my Burnt Sienna again with my Ultramarine Blue. So I'm mixing up something right in the middle, pretty neutral. Um, I want enough water in it that it flows. It's not super, super dark, but I don't want it super puddly either. All right, so I'm gonna mix up that and then blot my brush just a little bit. And then we're gonna take, take the brush and just kind of cover the area um, of the eyebrow. We're not painting individual hairs. We're just going to cover the shape of the brow with this kind of, you know, slightish kind of value. All right, so I haven't done anything more than just kind of put in the area that the brow takes up on the face. Then I'm going to blot my brush again and I'm just going to kind of soften the edges a little bit with the end of the brush. And I'm also just kind of hinting at some individual hairs in terms of texture. And that might be all I want to do for now on that one before before I let it before I let it dry. If I still want to thin it out just a little bit, like if I feel like it's too wide in a place, kind of what I'm doing here is pulling up some of the some of the paint that I put on there with a dry, the dry end of a brush. But again, I don't want to overwork it, overwork it. Let's do that same thing over here on the right. Picked up some of that mixed black. I'm going to cover the area of the eyebrow, the shape of the brow, with just you know, semi-transparent wash of this black. And I'm really just kind of looking for the overall angle of it, the area that it covers on the face. And then again, working quickly, I'm going to blot my brush and I come back to the shape that I painted, softening up just a little bit the edges, pulling into it from the outside to break up the solidness of that shape, but then also feathering out some of the edges. And while it's still wet, I could certainly go in if I notice that there are some places in the brow that do get a little bit more kind of overlapped by more hairs, a little bit thicker. You know, I can drop in some more of my black, right, just to kind of indicate that a little more. I can do that same thing over here. This one's still a little bit wet, so... Notice that it's kind of darker on the end, maybe a little bit darker here in the middle. And then just adjusting a little bit of the direction of the hairs, not, not getting, not going overboard. Okay. So there's still some of that skin tone showing through some of those places. And I've got that underlying layer underneath, but then I went over it with that, with the end of my brush, just to break up the solid edges. But then also, you know, put, putting in some of the individual hairs or the suggestion of some of those hairs. Again, if you feel like it's a little bit too solid, 
take a dry brush and just kind of pull out some of the color if you feel like it's too heavy in a certain place. But try to be fairly light-handed with that too. Right? So I might let this dry and if I feel like I still still want to put a little more, you know, of the texture in there, I can certainly do that, but we don't, when we look at someone's face, we don't really see so much individual hairs, right? We're just kind of seeing shapes and we're seeing overall, you know, overall values. And so I might, might leave that as it is. Um, if I decide that some places in the head need to be a little bit darker, like the, around the face, some of those values might get a little bit closer to that. So I might decide to make that darker eventually, but um, I think it's okay for now. Let's build on, you know, those that that first kind of layer approach. Um, part part of the the hairline is broken up by the edges, the, the little things I was doing with my brush fairly loosely, but I could also do that same thing when I'm as that I'm doing with the the eyebrows there with the smaller brush. This kind of stuff I did with the bigger brush, but I could you know do some of those fine. I'm kind of feathery marks. I could run my brush through those larger shapes to give that a little more texture as well. All right. So same kind of thing could be done. I don't want to make it too solid of a mass, right? And I don't want to make it look like too conformed, like into a wig shape or something. And so I'm trying to keep, keep some of the randomness in there. Okay. But you can certainly add a little more of that kind of soft feathering effect as happens in here. So, and I'm not sure how much, if I have my background painted already, this makes a lot more sense to have this kind of stuff overlapping whatever color I have in the background, but let's pretend I've painted the background and this is something that would overlap that. All right, so a little bit about eyebrows and hair texturing and water.